Alright, so there's a little bit of background noise, and that's because, like us, the uh, lawnmower man never stops with his lawnmower, so kudos to him. So, with this cube, we're going to start out and just press X and delete that, Shift A, insert it, plane. With this plane, we're going to press I to inset it, press Y to split that, and scale this in. We'll select this vert, and this vert, and we'll press J, which will just put a line down the middle using light and impulse. One of my favorite things about Blender, press G and go to face mode. And I'm gonna press numpad period, or not numpad period, the uh, period next to um, my letter keys to change this 3D cursor. I'm gonna press Y to split that. And we're just gonna S.5, S.75, there we go. Maybe um, S, we'll bring it down to, you know, S.5, I was right to begin with. And from here, we're just going to um, inset it to 0.07. In fact, we should um, look at it in this mode while we do that. All right, now we'll uh, use Control L to select Lake Geometry, then Shift H to hide everything but that. And we'll just cut a line here, and we'll cut one here. And we'll just delete those two faces, select points with uh, one at the top, and select these two points, Control X and dissolve them. Uh, basically building us the box cutter logo. And that's how I build the box cutter logo every time I do an ad. So from here, I'm gonna use hard ops, press Q, uh, sorry, uh, Q, T thick, use the thin Q menu in order to give it some thickness. So now we have some thickness here. And now we can uh, use the helper with control tilde, just apply solidify so that all this mesh is real. And we'll just select everything and press P to separate into loose parts. So this is separate, this is separate. And let's just get down with box cutter and in con, just doing some cuts. Actually, let's make sure it's yellow. In the previous version of Boss Cutter, you used to have slices automatically be put in their own collection, which was actually kind of cool. Now it doesn't because of a um, user request. However, I do miss the option. And so we actually should have maybe put that on a behavioral toggle where slices would have been in its own collection. I wouldn't have to select them and press H. And we're just drawing little in-gone cuts here. Just slicing things off and hiding it until the logo is nothing. So I know a tutorial on cutting our own logo is kind of um, crazy, but um, a lot of people in the Discord wanted um, me to do a video about just the process of how we make the hard ops ads because I do take great pride in it. You know, if you look at my oldest videos on my channel, they're about videos with music. You know, I'm very passionate about music. Um, hence me always trying to bring a certain aesthetic to you guys on the way to Box City to really set the station, you know. I think for the sake of this video, I'll probably um, play some of that that I've been listening to lately. So Ingon's a little bit of work, right? But let's just um, make short, shorter work of it. So we'll just cut out some of these bigger sh pieces. I just want a lot of interesting cuts because every time I posted the ad, people kept saying, are you using explode modifier? And I was like, no, man, I'm meticulously cutting all this stuff myself. And so the final ad, I actually got a little lazy at the end, but I wanted to just start off just cutting this thing up. Also got to admit that I did cut box cutter logos into the initial logo to tear apart. Um, but as you see, just doing all these cuts right here is a lot of work. You know, I've already been in here four minutes, four minutes too long. You know, someone's already downvoted me, right? For, for just spending too long cutting, you know, what's wrong with me? There's some benefits. Let's look at one. So right here, I'm going to just do a little angle cut, but 
instead of applying it, I'm gonna shift to live, keep that, and then use hard ops to uh, just Q array, just cut a whole bunch of those out. And we'll just hide that. And we could even turn on array as a tool and really just start making short work of this because I don't use ingon with the ray enough. It's crazy, it's crazy. And I mean, that's why I don't do videos because I'll be sitting here talking about how great this thing is, you know, because it just is. Um, I mean, of course I know there's a bit of work to be done, improvements to be had, but you know, I can't dismiss the efforts already being done. Um, so I do always look to the future, but I can take a moment in the current to admire um, what has been done. So we'll just cut one here and we'll actually uh, press V to press Y and we'll press F to flip that. Let's we'll bring these all in. Just hide all these little ticks we're making and we could make it even faster, right? We could just start using box. And we can start using box with, um, I was gonna say box with bevel and ingon, but that hasn't been implemented yet. Um, let's see, I wanna put this on the Y, ac the X axis. And we wanna draw a box here, but this time we want to uh, put it on the Y. Directional array is coming soon. I mean, the things you see that drive me crazy in these videos, are things that will not last long because I'll complain about them until we have another solution. Now I'll complain about that solution, talk about how we can uh, do it three different ways for three different tools, which is a uh, kind of an interesting way for us to approach things. Like right now I'm talking about how great it would be if um, inset from box cutter made it over to hard ops as a, uh, a manual system that custom customers can use and um, really dissect and perfect because box cutter is such a flip flip you're gone type of thing you know get cut by a box cutter you'll just you'll die five times before you hit the ground you know pity be the man who goes up against box cutter but continuing on just doing more slices and eventually we'll be down to nothing um, we're getting there don't worry, it gets real fast. But we just want to make a bunch of interesting cuts. That's the point here. Uh, if we wanted to just cut it away, we could just do that. But I would not mind if we had a directional array on the default array tool. Note to self, uh, proxy if you're watching this. We got to have some sort of array that's directional based off direction of drawing. That would be so awesome. And that's usually how development sometimes goes is, um, you know, with box cutter, I was meaning to show you guys this picture because this is what the plans for the new top bar looked like when I drew them up and I was actually going to have big color swatches and we had it for about five minutes before AR was like, whoa, let's definitely not do that. I can make some icons, but you know, the theme of Box Cutter 7-Eleven was slightly different. Like I, I was really wanting to exaggerate on all the different colors that Box Cutter can cut, you know, but it was, uh, it was getting crazy. So we dialed it back a little bit. So I hope you guys uh, do enjoy the, the theme of this release and the UI because, you know, everybody came together with um, different pieces of input in order to um, get it made right. So right here, I see that I could draw one right here. Get a bunch of nice little ticks out of that. But right here is where directional array would be awesome. You know, you need an array based off the box that you're drawing. It's only through usage of the tools that ideas come to me. But every day, day in, day out, box cutter central, you know, don't believe us check out the discord 24 hours always box cutter and it's you know it's nice to see the users on there collaborate you know gotta give a shout out to night nighthawk that indian guy tekken you guys uh really keep things happening always posting stuff you know the art that i see inspires us the complaints you give also inspire us so we've just about cut this logo to nothing so I think we did good here. 
let's alt h uh let's alt h bring it back but let's only go to layer one we don't want to see all those cutters that's crazy so with all of this i'm just going to click this checkbox up top and now every mesh is real and we're just going to join it together scale it down and we're going to apply the location rotation and scale now for this we have to come back to our regular view where we can turn on rigid body and give this mesh. And if we control space bar, it begins playing. So the next thing I'll do from here is I'll go and turn off gravity under scene. And now it'll just sit still. But if we select everything, we do P by loose parts. And then we do, uh, you know, origin to geometry. We gotta set the origins right. Now, box cutter explodes which over the course of uh making this release i was told hey it's not good to uh, show the box cutter logo exploding or being in a uh, broken state which i found funny it's like it doesn't matter how broken apart we are all these features are going to come back to us everything that was in 2.79 is going to come back and on top of that, on the way there, we plan to enhance everything as we get it back together using all the new things that 2.8 has to offer. So really it's a large degree of planning and imagination and drawing and collaboration all at the same time. But as we watch this thing play back, we could see the logo exploding and everything's kind of chaotic. But let's go ahead and just choose to uh, bake two keyframes and we'll bake that. And for this, we'll have to wait a moment. I do want to throw in a note at this moment that I'm using something called an i7 NUC, which is like a really small computer. It's like the size of a box of Eggo waffles because my AMD computer's offline at this moment. More on that later. But the computer I'm using has no GPU, so that's why I haven't been rendering or doing anything that's super impressive, or at least in my eyes, super impressive. Um, just been having to dial it back and actually get used to box cutter in a limited state. But really, it's given me ideas on how we can go in hard ops and make it more efficient for potato computers. Because potatoes need love too. I love potatoes, by the way. Like French fries. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to pause this video and go have some potatoes after this. But let's finish this video. There's this add-on called Commotion that is really awesome because it allows you to offset your animation data and so right here we have all these things exploding out and using this has actually given me the idea that we should make an exploded view for uh, hard ops where you can and box cutter where you can cut your model up do all these fancy things and then make it explode with your cutters uh, i just received a comment right before i made this video about how we should make the cutters be parented to the objects that we're cutting so we can move objects around non-destructively as well so these are all ideas that i look forward to uh, implementing in the future but continuing on so with this thing i'm just going to shift right click put my cursor here and using this i'm going to sort by cursor and i want the offset to be maybe 1.5 and we're just going to offset animation and this is also something that will make you wait but it looks like it's not in this case and if we press shift spacebar, we have the logo just flying out. And so ads are just a matter of literally playing this stuff in reverse. But I did want to do a small breakdown just on how I go about doing these. You know, I might have to give it 350 frames now because of all the offsetting. But Commotion is a really good tool that I really enjoy spending some time with. And I use it a lot for motion graphics and ads. So this is just an example on how, you know, box cutter was being used in motion graphics with me. I mean, I'm not a motion graphics artist, but I do like to dabble in um, making ads and propaganda for hard ops and box cutter to continue the legend and keep it alive and also build the hype for all the latest releases. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. I just wanted to get in, slice some things, use a little bit of rigid body and commotion. And with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.